Most people think it's a beastly shame that the Queen's B series is finally complete. There are quite a few beasts available from Coin Connection, and if you use the code Anton in the shop this month, then you get an extra 2% off everything they have. But what I really want to talk about is the beasts. Let's wander back in time and see where it all started back in 2016. So if you haven't heard of the new bullion series from the Royal Mint, the Queen's Beasts, then you probably soon will. They augment the Sovereign and the Britannia. And the Queen's Beasts, um, they were originally sculpted by a Royal Academician called James Woodford. And they were originally made in plaster and they stood outside the Palace of Westminster, Westminster Abbey, for the Queen's coronation in 1953. There are 10 of these beasts and uh, representing you know, everything from dogs to fabulous animals, um, griffin, lion, greyhound, dragon, unicorn, uh, the white horse of Hanover. And um, the original beasts are at the moment in the Canadian Museum of History and they've been represented on stamps and uh, there's a whole variety of Queen's Beasts. If you visit Kew Gardens in London, they were remade, re-sculpted in Portland stone uh, because the original plaster ones were too delicate and had to be taken indoors after the coronation. But uh, we now have a one ounce gold, a quarter ounce gold and a two ounce silver Queen's Beast and they form the first in a series of 10 Queen's Beasts and uh, I've ordered the, the silver one which should arrive uh, very soon and here is the gold one. This particular one is the quarter ounce. If you buy them from the Royal Mint Bullion um, and Losing Louis mentioned the, the issues in setting up an account with Royal Mint Bullion but if you do manage to buy one from there they will get supplied in a very nice delightful Royal Mint capsule uh, added value and it keeps them in good order because when they're supplied through other channels they're supplied in tubes and it may be that some of them will be in slightly less than pristine condition as they're sold as bullion but overall I think it's um, it's very good I think the the obverse with the Queen's head on is it looks to me as if it's slightly you know so here we are in 2021. Uh, fast forward five years, actually pretty much six years, because some of the bullion ones came out a little bit kind of earlier. The first proof was 2017. And we've had 10 of these mystical magical beasts, and we've had one completer coin this year to finish off the series. The completer coin, I think, was originally going to be a medal, and they decided at the last minute to make it into a coin. Um, and there's been some great designs. I think a lot of people, one of her, their favorites are the Griffin, which came last in the proof and uh, second uh, from first in the bullion. Um, the Red Dragon of Wales, I think was one of the uh, popular ones. The Lion of England was a popular one. And they had a few that kind of didn't quite hit the mark along the way um, the the bull maybe or the yeah this one maybe the black bull of Clarence some people didn't like quite as much um, you know I mean they're variable but um, I think at their best things like the griffin the unicorn the dragon the lion of England um, some of the ones that maybe weren't quite as good the lion of Hanover maybe um, the greyhound of Richmond but, you know, there were none of them along the way that people disliked. And uh, the, the addition limits were pretty reasonable throughout the whole series. Uh, they didn't really waver that much throughout the series, which is pretty good. And as a, um, an investment, and no 
modern commemorative coins are really investments in the traditional sense but you know as a place to put your money obviously they're made of precious metal and that you know that's a base to what they could be but actually they've been doing pretty well in terms of the marketplace uh, particularly when graded uh, there aren't that many of the one ounce coins around there are quite a few people who are collecting the series and i think these should hold their value fairly well the falcon the falcon wasn't incredibly popular i'm not sure the falcon is as great a design as some of the others um, my personal favorite i think probably is the griffin then you have the completer coin which has all of them and uh, and that one i think is probably also the one that if people only ever buy one of the series it's going to be the completer coin that people are going to go for so it'll be interesting to see what happens to these uh, over a period of time i i do like it i think it's uh, really good there will be a two ounce gold version of this coin along fairly shortly but they're going to be pretty hard to get i think they're probably all pre-sold anyway at the mint so watch out for those uh, because they should be even more spectacular so i want to leave you with one bit of video that i took earlier on this week um, and i very rarely get one of these 10 ounce format coins in they don't mint very many of them and uh, so i thought i'd make a few minutes of video even though you guys have seen uh, quite a lot of the queen's beast collection on my channel um, it's the first time i think i've had one of these in the box to open up as a kind of unboxing to show you this particular denomination. So uh, I've had one or two that have arrived that I've put up on the channel already unboxed, but it's really cool to see just how great this presentation actually is from the Mint. You know, one thing the Royal Mint do very, very well is presentation. They have some great, uh, great boxes. Uh, they look quite something when you open them, open them up. Um, I think that you know, if they could make some of their coins as good as some of their boxes, I think they would have uh, a total, total winning combination. Um, so what we've got is a little plaque in the box. I mean, how cool is that? You know, and each coin has its own number on the plaque. And they do this for the 10 ounce format and also for the one kilo and two kilo formats. And what you've got here is a coin that is basically the same diameter as the five ounce silver coins, but it's almost like a Piedfort, it's twice the width. In a way, I wish that they made the 10 ounce coins a little bit wider. They do on the gold coins, on the gold 10 ounce coins, they're making them wider. But the big problem with the Piedfort ones is that of course, you know, when you look at them and they're graded particularly, you can't see the depth of them very easily. So you know that they are, you know, heavier and bigger and uh, rarer with only 175 minted in this case. Same with the three graces, only 175 coins. You know all those things, but still they look pretty much the same thing. And it's not helped by the fact that the denomination is the same. So the £10 denomination is the same for the five ounce and the 10 ounce um, silver coins. So uh, you know, I guess maybe nobody really looks at the denomination side. Let's take a little look at the coin itself and take it out of the, uh, out of the holder. And you can see just what a big chunky coin this is. So you've got the, the beast around the outside and this particular one looks to be a pretty good one and then you've got it's a bit like a kind of two ounce silver coin on steroids so you've got the same kind of thing as the five ounce coin um, and then it's twice the twice the depth um, but it's a pretty rare coin and there's lots of people now who have started going after the uh, these 10 ounce coins uh, but they are pretty expensive so on the second hand market or the secondary market uh, these coins are fetching Pretty good prices. Um, this one is fetching what uh, 1500 pounds, something like that. It was probably about eight or nine hundred pounds from the mint. Um, and the Three Graces coin has sold for up to 14 
thousand pounds, as far as I'm aware. But um, you know, it's pretty variable depending on how many people are bidding at auctions at the same time for the coin and really want it. But there is quite a big following for these coins based on the auction prices that I've seen recently. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I got the opportunity to show you this coin because you don't really see these very often and quite a number of them will be graded. So there won't be that much of an opportunity to see these kind of raw ones and just see what a chunky kind of coin it is and uh, such a nice coin from the mint. Hope you like the content today and the, the look back at the last five years of the Queen's Beast series. If you did, then please click on the little bell and get notified when the next Numistaka video is coming out.